in September 2020, we sold our house in the UK, then moved to Normandy in France, where we bought an ancient French farmhouse with various outbuildings, including an old barn, a small cottage with two woodlands, and three and a half acres of pastured land in a beautiful national park area. Follow us on our journey as Budo and I renovate the farmhouse, manage our land and take on many projects for you to enjoy. Let the fun begin. Bonjour everyone. Welcome folks. Um, back in Caravan Corner. Yeah, we're back in the Caravan Corner because we've got a lot of things going on in the house there. Yeah. And we've got our family turning up today. So we're just trying to get this one out of the way so we can get the video out to you guys. Um, this will be on Wednesday, this, this video. Is a video. This is a Wednesday one, yeah. So what's uh, what we want to talk about quickly is, is what's in the video. Um, I just wanted to say in this video, there's, there's the porch stuff is happening, you know, we're planking up the timbers and so on and so forth. Uh, carrying on from last Friday but the context is out a little bit because they are supposed to put in there about the chain the new chain bar and uh, for the uh, and the chain for the chainsaw and how I put it all together you'll see that in this video um, the other thing I want to quickly talk about as well as we want to keep this brief uh, is the uh, the a friend of ours who lives up the road here uh, runs a horse retreat and looks after horses naturally um, and also has 25 acres I believe mm. of um, woodland and a bit of pasture and so on but most of it's woodland so she's got willow woods or willow glades so she's got a uh, pine forest and then she's got normal mm. sort of uh, deciduous trees like you know like oh, well all like oaks and uh, chestnuts I think there's some ash and some other things there but what she's asked me to do is to uh, set up for doing uh, woodland courses and woodworking, uh, working with wood basically. The wood she has there is in abundance and uh, to make up projects on her site, uh, do some videoing and get people out to do courses. Mm -hmm. um, so we're looking at that, that's all coming up in the near, very near future. We should start this, the ball rolling and we've also got a very very good b and b close by we're literally in a car about two to three minutes away um which alberta and jup our yeah. patrons that you saw in the last video they stayed at and they they said they would highly recommend it they it's thoroughly enjoyed place. themselves keith yeah. and jill run a really good tight yeah. ship and they really make it you welcome lovely food as well you lovely food there. and they look after you they put the wood burner on set you off and you know watching yeah. or doing what you want to do in the in the uh, watch telly or whatever you want to do there um anyway so basically that's it uh tracy this week you're yeah and um, this week you will see which we filmed last week um myself and alberfa um alberfa shows me how to grow two different types of oyster mushrooms which are quite happy now they're sitting on the um, window seat in our bedroom so they're doing really well and also only temporary mind you <laughs> yeah only temporary um and also i've been doing a lot of work um in our potager um because the land takes a lot of time up doesn't it a lot, they, a lot of time we've spent on the land yeah and in the last six seven weeks maybe we have to give 50 percent to that as much as the renovation so i've done another free growing beds that's putting the lime down the cardboard and the compost i've been planting as well so there is a big change up there Definitely. so that will be coming up very shortly in up and coming videos well, there as well as you see in the last videos well, i've been dropping off and doing the porch work now yeah. so what i'm doing basically is doing all the preparation uh, of the timbers and sectioning and so on before i can go into the nice stuff like making the mortars tenants and creating the joinery uh, Tracy's been really busy up in the garden on her own and uh, she's doing all the wheelbarrowing and everything so she's been doing a great job up there holding the fort uh, for the gardening sections and then in between trying to sand down the front room as well yep. the beams and everything um, which is on hold at the moment because obviously our grandson's coming Archie and, he, and I don't want him dust, sort of yeah. around that atmosphere so that will be on hold so we're just trying to do everything aren't we we are we are we're very busy uh, and after uh, the family go home which will be about uh, seven days time yeah 
we are uh, going to set up the back end of the house for Tracy to start approaching uh, with to her do to do her pointing as she's been uh, lear learned how to do very well which does a great Love job uh, but I said to you the other day didn't I if I could just not have to look after the dogs do all the housey stuff do the parts of the renovation and just do pointing seven days a week I would well, Absolutely love it. you're going to have a load to do anyway, so <laughs> you're going to be busy. Uh, Tracy's got to do like stonework as well, which I've showed her, and she's got to put in fixed stones and yeah, big stones. Pack, do the packing at the back, and then do all the pointing work, and then point the whole lot uh, from a scaffold. She'll be doing all the jet washing and everything. So that's all coming up in the future. Yeah. But that's Tracy's going to be. That's her focus after next week for a couple of weeks or more yeah. uh, while she we can get back into the front room and then she can finish the ceiling while I'm doing the porch. It's all weather, but isn't it? It's weather, a lot, on the weather as A well. lot of it has been weather for yeah, us, hasn't it? it's been strange, Because the, weather. the weather's been a bit strange. A lot of rain at the moment, and uh, it's on and off, on and off, on and off constantly. Yeah. Um, and it, 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 you plan for one day, and then the next next you wake up that day, and it's completely raining, so you have to try and... Yeah. Go set inside. yourself up with something else you know and it's very difficult but we're getting there but i've also been doing my etsy shop as well because i've had another four sales on my etsy shop so i'm trying to do that as well yeah. and but, it's, but while i um i would like to say uh, both of us would a big thank you to debbie g oh um, yeah who bought us 10 coffees and she's asked Amazing. us to buy some lavender so thank you so much that was just so lovely to wake up to i woke up to the sales on the etsy shop and then yeah it was lovely someone buying us 10 coffees but what we're going to do is we're actually going to use the money to buy the it's a, like a membrane isn't it's the it? bash it's the, the bash. uh it's a special well, it's a breathable it, uh membrane you saw me doing it on the uh well we were doing it on the lavender lavender so we need a few more rolls of that so we can actually invest that money into that and that's part of you uh, uh, contributing to our lavender yeah. field. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. That was very kind of you. Um, and it, it, we're going forwards now. We mm. are just going to, they've got lots to do. We've got the workshop to build this summer. We've got the porch to build this next three or four weeks or so. Uh, Inside. We've got to finish the kitchen off uh, building work because it's halfway up and it's collapsed. We've cleared it out. We're, yeah. we're getting on to that. Um, and then there's a little bit to do inside, so we're going to have a really busy the summer. Land pointed. And keeping the land up to the uh, up yeah. to scratch, okay? Because there's so much to do, isn't there? Yeah. It's like on the lavender as well. There's all the weeding. You're not just doing a tiny garden. So, but the good thing is, I'm going to be outside for most of the you summer, are, aren't I? You so are. I'm not going to so, complain. So what I'm going to say now is, uh, please, it does help. Like, share and subscribe i mean if you subscribe to us really does help us on the analytics yeah. because as you are subscribing to us you're pushing us helping pushing us up on the um yeah. on the statistics analytics because yeah. we we're staying at a level we're happy with it really but we'd like to grow obviously because yeah. we're not on it for a laugh we do put a lot of time into youtube for you guys um and we you know to keep you entertained and keep you enjoying our videos mm -hmm. Uh, we try to keep it diverse and doing lots of different things. We're not repeating the same things. Mm -hmm. And we're certainly not trying to clickbait you into something. We're just trying to bring you into what's happening, what we actually happening on that day. But if you could do that for us, that would really help. Put your not notification Cations bell on. on as well. And also, if you would like to, you know, support and be part of our journey, you can also um, join us on Patreons because yep. the next stage, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be naming lavender rows and also we're going to be investing um, in some more trees. Yep. Um, so Already looked into that. So When you join us, obviously the next on the, the list you will have your name put on a tree as well that's it so uh you know thank you all once again thank yeah. you for watching and enjoying and uh all your lovely comments and uh we'll see you on the next one hi there everyone um we're here today with alberta our lovely patreon and she's going to show me how to grow oyster mushrooms yes. two different types of oyster mushrooms is that correct yes yeah, correct yes okay the Albert. white one and the gray one gray okay. one and what are they what's the white one called in dutch oyster oyster it's the same thing is it it's the same yep okay so what have we got here now we've got a, a bucket who is prepared with two holes on the side and two holes on the lid okay they have breathing tape yep 
you put wet coffee grounds in. Okay. You uh, put the yeah. spores. spores. The spores in. Yes. Mi uh, mix it. Yes. Let it sit yes. in a warm place. Okay. Until it's white. Right, okay. And then fill it up again with another coffee grout. And then when it's finished, they grow on its own ab about the... From the holes. From, from the, the holes, holes. yeah. Lovely. So that's from the side, yes, fantastic. Yes. And that's as easy as that? That is easy. Yes. Very and easy. And then you can eat when it is finished. Yes. Put 80% out and put new one in. New coffee. New coffee. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then it grow again. Oh. Yeah, so you can keep yes. using it, can't yeah. you? Yes. yes. And the sort of consistency of the coffee grounds, um, do they have to...? It, it's moist. Moist, yeah. No, not too wet because yeah, then they rotten away. Yes. But it's moist. Yep. That's perfect. Okay. Yep. Lovely. So we put the... So what you do this then? Mm, this smell out, the boys, coffee. Yes. Can you get that open? It's very... Ah. Okay. I see. So they, oh, this, they must be the seeds, I suppose. Yes. They? Yeah, yes. But the whole package, package go in. Yeah, okay. Package, okay. You must mess it up. Wow. Lovely. And um, Alberta, how long does it, how many mushrooms do you get and how, or roughly, you know, how long does it go on for? Does it is continuous or is it after the one season, no more? Um, mostly one season. Yeah. One season. Okay. Yeah, and then you start the process again. Yeah. And then you come back again and yeah, do it I again had, for us. <laughs> for, for my bucket, I had uh, a kilo. That's yeah. good. You had yeah. a kilo of mushrooms? Yes, that yeah. is very wow. good. Then you turn it around. Okay. And that's it. So you just as leave it. That's easy as that. Fantastic. Then you put the lid on and put it in a warm place. Yep. Yes. And look. Lovely. And when it's all white, then go, uh, some more coffee. More coffee more grounds. Coffee. Yep. Okay. And then when it's big enough, they grow our outer side and our on the top. Fantastic. Lovely. So from start to finish, when will you get your first mushrooms? I don't. Maybe three, four weeks. Yeah. Oh, that's oh, good. That's good so. Very good. Lovely. I'll have to be looking on in, in my cookbooks to get some oyster mushroom recipes. Yeah. Or you'll have to send me some. Uh, I will. <laughs> yes. That's fantastic. Thank you Bye. very much for that. This is the simple the coffee me method. Yes. Now we've got another one here. Let me put this one over here. You have a plastic, plastic bottle. Yeah. Yes. Plastic bottle. bottle. Yeah. I put sawdust in. Yes. In a wedding. Yes. And I have a different kind of uh, oyster. It's a grey oyster. Yes. Then put a little bit what I did with the coffee grout yes. in it, and then put new sawdust on. Wet sawdust, like moist sawdust, or uh, this is moist. Yep. But put then new sawdust on. Yep. Moist uh, oyster sawdust oyster. Till you get to you the can top. Just wet it yeah, you as you yeah, yeah, tiny yeah, bit. Exactly. And you can hang it on a, <laughs> on a spot where it's warm, yeah. but not directly sun. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. And it put little holes in it. Yes. Yeah. And the oyster grows out. Yeah, fantastic. So it's so simple, isn't it's it? Very really simple. very simple. Fantastic. Well, I'm yes, to I am the, really uh, looking this. forward to this. And when you uh yeah. More likeable is the bigger uh, cans yes. you can buy here in France. Yes. yes. You got a, 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 the water in the big cans, yeah, five okay. liter cans. Yeah. And that suits better, but yeah. it's cold. But this is just as good, isn't yeah. it, really? Yeah. If you don't want a big yield of oyster mushrooms, this is actually perfect, yeah. isn't it? Fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. So, folks, I'm. Um, just about to section up this um, uh, what's it called a uh, slab of oak um, and I thought I'd show you something well I'll just talk quickly about resources really um, 
nothing of this tree will be wasted nothing every part I can use I will use um, anything that's usable will be kept and dried properly this is what we call green oak working okay but what I want to show you is, is what on the round if you like you get a cut and it comes out like this basically I'm gonna pick one up show you so that's what you're left with okay so what I'm gonna do is I keep all this I'll cut it up I put it in a barra I've already taken a couple round and I've probably close on probably close on a um, a stir worth of timber and what that means basically you get a stir which is roughly a cubic stacked cubic meter and then you get what they call a cord which is it's three roughly three cubic meters of this timber uh, of this cut okay and that, that gives you a cord what they call a cord well in france currently to buy a stir of, of this and i've got around about a stir of it now already is 70 euros for wood okay uh for the fireplace this is for the your fireplace or your wood burners or your, like we've got a wood burner and we're gonna have a uh, uh an oven which cookies cooks on wood some more there to come when i log this up there'll be more coming off of that and the other four i've got over there i've got two or three more at diddy's the farms uh, logs to come and collect i've got another big beach log to collect off another friend of ours so there's loads to come but 70 euros a time is a lot of money in today's you know world like you know if you keep buying it i suppose one cord, one cord well let's say a stir would last you two weeks maybe three weeks if you're lucky two weeks so you can see it's all free heating to me <laughs> so after i've processed these logs the price of the logs will be the cost of the firewood if you understand so i will be getting everything i need out of this lot in terms of uh usable material and the rest will be used on the wood burner which will be what i originally paid for the whole lot anyway plus i get all the free wood so it's free timber really but i just want to show you this as well right i'm gonna show you how it works in a minute this is my dowel maker now for those who uh, are not sure about woodworking and that don't know a dowel is a, a pin uh better off actually if i set this up i'll show you what i mean then i'll explain this a little bit better to you okay welcome right so just to explain what these let me get rid of this what these are all about um i made this up some time ago i've already shown our patrons they've seen this because they get uh early footage of stuff we're doing now um but basically this is a dowel maker and how i make it is i have a thin tube in a bigger tube with a hole in the bottom welded to a plate bolted on to a uh, an old log a bit of oak and then I, I fashion out a slot in here with a slope on the bottom and i'll show you how it works in a minute on the top here i uh, uh grind down a very sharp edge and i keep that maintained i, I sharpen that as well just generally with a file um, and what i'm going to be doing is is driving some oak straight grain oak straight through this and it will flare out and it will push it out i've already loaded it what they call loading it so it's got a dowel in there now it'll always hold one dowel in there um, because uh it, it doesn't just fall through it's it's being pinched by this internally and it will hold through so when i put the next one let me show you what i do so let's get a bit of timber let's have a look at this so this is relatively straight grained okay i should have gloves on but i'm going to do it without i line this up over the hole uh to roughly there using my forest hammer i call this a forest hammer um mule whatever i start to guide it down into that and drive it down into that hole if you like and it will start to go i just check it's going in all the way around needs a bit of force but nice general taps and did you see out the bottom there a dowel dropped and that's the other dowel that i've just done okay so that gives me a nice three quarter dowel to do my draw draw pegging on my Maltz and tenant work all right um 
The other thing I'll explain to you about them in a minute, let me just finish this off. Whoop. Anyway, that's through now. Okay, so that's in there now. That's, that dowel is sitting in there, ready for me to bang another one down, and that'll push the next dowel out. But these dowels are coming out of wet timber. Okay, and uh, if you're going to do this sort of thing, make dowels, let the dowels dry. Uh, just get them out, make them early as you can, and then try and dry them out. Um, it's three quarters. I mean, technically, it could take a few months for that to dry but I have a way of doing it anyway. But um, dry them out before you use them because if you bang them in when they're wet like this, they're gonna go in nice and tight, but then they're gonna lose the moisture, start to shrink, and the dowels will rattle inside the uh, slot. So it's important to make sure the dowels are dry. The rest of the wood doesn't matter uh, because we're making green wood joinery. Okay, so there's a little bit of kit there I've made. Uh, well had for a while now but it's uh it's there for me to make dowels and just fashioned up a little uh, forest hammer and the reason I don't that is is because there's a sharp edge on there and I have to finish the last knocks and it hits that sharp edge on here it damages it so if I use one of my good um uh mallets wooden mallets I just ruin it and this it doesn't matter this will get ruined, eaten out like my other ones, and then eventually just thrown on the wood pile and then start another one. There you go. Thought you'd enjoy that. Um, and that's how I make dowels. I'll give you a bit of a close up. Hopefully, you can see that. Nice dowel. Actually, I'll show you what I do at the ends as well. So that's why I got the, my little hat, axe, my little Swedish axe. Um, Basically what I do is I just chop the edges down, keeping my hand close to the uh, the head of this axe, okay? I'm having to do it this way because I haven't made a, uh, a shave horse at the moment, or forest shave horse if you want to call it that. And basically that's it, it's not, it doesn't have to be fancy like a pencil or nothing. Just has to be enough that when it goes in the slot, it will connect with the other slot, the other side of the tenon. It will push against the tenon because the tenons are offset. The holes in the tenons are offset, and it starts to pull the uh, the the tenon into the shoulder of the mortise, if you like, and tenon, and that will get its way through. Once it goes in a little way, then the whole dowel will pull in and hold. All right, and that's it. That's basically it. That's all I do. Nothing complicated, very simple. So good morning folks. Um, what you see now is the last bit of that log left here. Um, and I've just got to get two um, door jams, if you like, out of that. You see the rest of it, I've sheeted it over because we are contending with the rain in and out. It's coming in every, every other day now. <clears throat> we have a nice sunny day and then two or three days of rain, but hey ho, that's spring. So, what I've done is, I've sliced off the top of this log, as you can see on here, um, because it, it was so undulating I couldn't get my, um, my line on it. And this is the line, if you can see that, there. And how I achieved that is I just make a measurement that I, I want to uh, cut out that slab. And then I use a chalk line, which is this thing here. Okay, just a common old carpenter's chalk line. Um, put it at one end, the other end, ping it, and it leaves a little mark there for me. Uh, and the chalk that I use on there is a red chalk because I can see that better than blue. But anyway, so you can see what I've done here. I've had to shore this up here to make this log solid so it doesn't even move. I put some wedges at the other end, um, and I've cut off um, the top bit, which I've cut some. Sorry, I was going to show you there. So I've cut these off here okay and i'll show you what i'll do with them in a bit um basically for the joinery so i'm sort of prepping myself in in the beginning getting ready for it to uh so i can make this joinery uh it's all going to be mortise and tenon 
Um, so we're moving a pace now, so I'm going to cut this one out. And that'll probably be the last bit I get out of this slab. I could probably get another two inch from there. Might have a go at that, but we'll see. I don't actually need it at the moment, so I'll just leave it standing redundant for a little while. But I'm going to cut this slab out now and then process this slab. And from that you can see, from that flat top and the sides, I would easily get three, possibly four out of that. Uh, five inch. Let's have a little check. I don't need, I haven't even looked at the depth of this yet. Hang on. Just get my tape. So let's just come out of the way. So 20 and a quarter. Let's get in there. Where is it? Yeah, I'm definitely going to get three out of there. And it'll probably leave me with a 4b5 slab or section if you like anyway so uh i just thought i'd show you this as well look so i made myself a little mule a mole a mule whatever you want to call it hammer basically it's a uh what we call in the trade a forest hammer there's my mate lionel going out on his motorbike hey hill um yeah so i made that and that's just for striking metal tools basically uh wherever you are you sort of make one up so you don't uh, hit metal against metal on tools anyway let's crack on Hi folks, so it has arrived. There's me bar I was talking about, okay. Um, I'm not sponsored by this company. I've got a hat on and I've got a few things from them because uh, I've got some more protection gear, which I needed. Um, I've got this chain here, which is a, um, it's a ripping chain really, as rather than a cross cutting across the uh, log, it's for ripping down the log, okay. Um, because my other chain I was using, I'd actually filed it at 10 degrees to, when I say 10 degrees is the angle, um, I'd actually filed that just as a makeshift one for now to do the job. But what I'm going to show you is, is when I ordered this, I thought my um, steel MS291, I thought it was a um, 3 8 So when I ordered it, when I say three eighths, I mean on the sprocket. They call this a sprocket, okay? So that didn't come with this lot. And then when I opened it up, I realized what had happened. And I didn't want to send all this back and start again, because uh, I've waited a little while for this lot. So, I went down to uh, Dom Front, which is not too far from us. It's about 10 or 15 minute drive. And luckily had one sprocket in left. 
on a 3 8 so that means it fits this chain properly okay so i'll quickly show you how i change that out um so i always leave these a little bit loose because I, I always take the bars out if i'm not going to use it for a while um So that's what I've got to take off this sprocket. You can see the different sizes. I'll show you when I get it out anyway. So on here, we have a little uh, circlip, which I've got to get out. And you use the tool that comes with it, which is nice. Um, so that's that out. We don't want to lose that because I've got to go back. Take the washer off and take the sprocket. This is quite a new one anyway, one I've got in England. And you can see that the sprocket sizes are different okay so i'm going to put the 3 8 back on um needle bearing this is a needle bearing here you've got to be careful with these there's oil on there oh there's grease sorry so i'm not going to touch it it's fine okay but the trick the thing you do need to do is is on here is a little line and that indicates this little um slot here and on that slot you have to find it inside inside the uh in this edge here okay and i can see it actually so i just line it up drop it on till it connects that's not in there yet so oh no sorry let's just see it's over here <laughs> that's why okay that's it that's on lovely right and what that is basically that is the little pump mechanism to pump out the oil here to feed the chain and the bar right so when i put this new bar on and chain it's going to be really stiff and it needs uh like wearing in because there'll be paint in here and it will just need to be worn in a little bit now on the uh bars the chains they do remind me a little bit of the uh, oregon stuff but I don't know but anyway it says a uh, Sagan Spe Spezi which I, I think is German and I don't know if it's related to Chinese I don't know right but anyway so that's what it is so the sprocket's spinning lovely now I've got to lock it off again so I put the washer back on and that's the little clip okay so I have to put that on there and the way I do them is I just tap this on with the back of the blade until it just connects then I put the uh, screwdriver against it and then I lock it in like that okay so that's locked in it ain't gonna come off now then we get the bar she's looking good and I'll just line the chain up the right way so actually let's get the bar on somehow and you'll see these little holes are here and here that's for the little oil feeder and that's what i lined that up to pump that oil to pump it onto here to pump it around the chain and lubricate everything very important because if you don't do that then this gets kaput very quickly okay so we could be better doing this on its side actually put the chain on looks like it's on the correct way so that's around the wrong way at the moment this is always a fiddly job just get it in the slot I can feel that's tight already and I want to get it around the sprocket and that fits lovely Okay, so we're going to have to undo this a little bit because that's a little bit tight. So how we do that is this screw here. And we unwind it. Never make these easy. Okay, let's... Uh, 
change tack. I'm going to get it on here first. Because there's a little, uh, a little cog on here, that's it. So that's right there. Now we can get it around the sprocket. So you've got to make sure the chain sits inside that little groove all the way around, yeah? And then we've got to line this up. Okay. Oh, we nearly had it. It's real time. Okay, so what we've got to do is we're going to have to unwind it a little bit more. Anti clockwise always turns it into the uh, machine. There we go. So we're on there. Okay, so we've got to just make sure we're flat, which we sort of are. our uh, guard on and we just need to get one on there clamped in but I'll put two on once I do this back one up a little bit hey okay, turn it on the side again okay so we're miles out now now we go the other way. Just want to make sure these are not on tight. Oh, wrong way. You start to see the chain move. Make sure we're getting in that groove. Now that chain is actually tight in there, so I've got to, I've got to release this. Uh, it's well stiff, all right? So, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to do it off camera because I want to take this back off and I'm going to lubricate all this with this go over the top a little bit and then get this moving give it a spin over so it's free running and then we'll have this bad boy done <laughs> okay welcome back so she's up and running now i just cut a piece off over there and uh oh it's a beast this is uh it's it's got much it's, it's got more like a rather than a, a cutting feel to it it's more like a planing feel it's planing its way through the wood um but it was really tight and it took me about 10 10 or 15 minutes to sort it out really um so i went and got my little um syringe and then I just, all I did basically is, is I went along it dot, 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 dot inside the little holes and then uh, checked that the oil chamber was full up in the machine and then started it slowly, slowly, slowly and eventually it was spinning round. Then I checked for the, um, the oil flow coming off the end of the blade. If you put it up against something close to it and rev it up, it will, it will put an oil line down and it tells you that it's being oiled. And then you just feel the chain and as long as it ain't feeling hot at all when i've done the cut it's lubricating okay so we're up and going now so there she is she's a bit unwieldy 
bit heavy on the front but that's all right because i can let the weight of this cut it push down into the timber as i'm ripping through it if you like so next time you'll be seeing me uh doing some cutting with this um this machine and i ain't gonna pretend it's you know for what it is this machine is too small really for this bar okay so you lose the torque and you lose the power but it's doing one job for me you know if i try to take all these logs to the siri and uh have them cut it'd be into hundreds and hundreds of pounds maybe a thousand pound or euros i should say sorry to kind of take all this there get them to take it off cut it all up to the sections i want blah 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 so this is the cheapest option so if we by the end of this um job that i've done and this is ruined say the chain it won't be but say it was all the uh bar it's not a great loss it was 90 euros something like that for this about 90 euros and you get two chains with it i ordered an extra chain this is this one i think it was about 20 euros for this chain or less and this is a proper ripping chain but bar to bar as they say bar to bar no pun intended um it will do the job for us and it's the depth now i can get through these logs properly and now i can start to really work hard uh, for the next few days logging up these or, or, pl or plunging them planking them and um getting ready for the job for the uh thing so keep watching this space <laughs>